John Tester isn't one of them. Senator Tester from Montana. Yeah, thank you, Chairman Brown, Ranking Member Scott. And yeah, you haven't heard from Senator Kennedy yet. Uh, that's coming. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to first of all thank the chairman and ranking member for their leadership, not only in having this hearing, but also in the bill, uh, the Fend Off Fentanyl Act. Um, it is long past time that this bill get passed. Uh, I think that uh, ranking member Scott said it right. The shenanigans in the House need to stop, and we need to get some stuff done. Um, I had a bill on China buying farmland. Uh, they stopped that. Uh, we wrong thing to do, but for probably political reasons they did it. But why they would stop this makes no sense to me. We need to categorize fentanyl as a national emergency that it is. We do need to hold China accountable for its role in this crisis. And we need to give law enforcement, border agents, uh, the tools that they need to be successful. And in that regard, I want to thank each and every one of our witnesses for being here today and for your your testimony, I think it's it's really important. I want to follow up a little bit on what Senator Tillis was talking about um, on the cash. Okay, the Fend Off Fentanyl Act is a bill that we passed here, bipartisan, nonpartisan, big numbers, and um, the House screwed it up, which is what they tend to do most of the time anyway. But uh, uh, the cash issue is not something that we've talked a lot about, and the money laundering issue isn't something we've talked a lot about. You started to answer his question. I want you to finish that answer on what we need to do on this side of the dais to have some impacts on the money laundering aspects. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I, I was touching upon AM, additional AML compliance at financial institutions. They, they need additional oversight, and they need to, to, to better track with suspicious activity reports what's transpiring with Chinese money laundering. In addition to that, I think there's a tremendous opportunity with data. Right? You can pull the data that I'm talking about that's on WeChat. So we go out, DEA goes out and does 10 arrests on a Chinese money laundering cell. If you pull all that data in from search warrants, judicial process on laptops, phones, and elsewhere. You can normalize that data and kick out targeting packages immediately to the field, right? So we're missing that opportunity with speed. We need to impact these organizations with speed. So in terms of funding and approach, there's, there's an opportunity with data to go after the Chinese money laundering networks. The last one is in the encrypted app that I talked about with WeChat. We have to be able to surveil and intercept that. Uh, let's go back to the AML. You're saying this money laundering, a fair portion of it, is going through our banking system right now, our regulated banking system? That's correct. It, it's, it's the, when, when the Chinese money laundering organization sells the dollars back to a Chinese customer that wants to invest or spend money in the States, those, the day before, those were the proceeds of the narcotics trafficking that we're talking about. So it is going into the system, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yos, I, I, I want to thank you for your support of uh, not only the Fend Off Fentanyl Act, but the Anti-Drugs Act that, that I have. You talked in the testimony about the impact it has on uh, your fellow police officers handling this poison. And um, I have two questions. Number one, from a on-the-street standpoint, talk to me about how the Fend Off Fentanyl Act will make a, a difference. Well, Senator, I think uh, I, th I think the, the age-old problem that we will all have and we'll have after we leave and, and it'll be on our next crisis is that criminal enterprises are operating at a, at, a, at, a, at a pace that is much further than we can make decisions and fix these problems. Uh, I think the, the, the Fentanyl Act is so very important because it gives us extra tools in order to be able to combat this. But the reality is, is this is just going to be the first step. Yeah. Uh, this is an evolution, and in, in, in order for us to, to have any meaningful impact, we need to do two things. Uh, and it was spoken here earlier. We got we got to operate at a faster pace. There's no reason whatsoever that anyone here in Washington should be against finding ways to save and protect uh, Americans from something that is clearly a crisis. And we need to we need to stop. Uh, you know, it, it needs to to move at a much faster pace if we're going to keep up with those people that we're trying to uh, to combat. Uh, the other side of it is is that uh, it, it's frustrating to to. Uh, you know, one being overloaded, trying to trying to deal with this crisis, trying to manage it with the with the manpower that exists, and adding all of the other challenges that we have in law enforcement associated with it, um, and that is something that's always going to be a challenge. It's always going to be a, a outpace what our what our resources are, and uh, something that we need to give some attention to. But this, uh, I think, this bill is a, a huge step 
and bringing us in a direction, give us some tools in order to be able to take, uh, take uh, as long as we have, it's profitable uh, to do this, we're always going to be behind, the, you know, behind. Uh, we got to find a way to be able to, to break it up. And, and I think when it comes down to, to, to really following the money, uh, regardless, uh, it's always going to evolution, it's always going to evolve. There's always going to be new challenges for us, but uh, I think we have to find a way to, at a much faster pace, be ahead of it. And this, this bill gives us, certainly puts us in that right direction. Mr. Ford, I'm out of time, but but I just want to say thank you very much. Your testimony is incredibly powerful, and what you do every day to impact lives for the better in this country is something we need to take notice of. And I don't know if you've ever been to Montana, but anytime, any place, you're welcome to come up because I think your message needs to be heard all over this country, including rural America. So yes, thank sir. you. I'd love to see you there. <laughs> thank you. It's a pretty state where you live. It's, it's, it's a pretty state where you live. Oh, man, it's it's heaven. 